Welcome to my shortwave channel. I haven't posted for a while, but I've been busy, as you can see from the mess in my radio room. Um, I have a couple of ICOM ICR71E uh, receivers in from a deceased estate, which I'm having a look at to see if I can get them to work again. Three of them, actually, and one of them came in its box, which you can see over here. And... Uh, there are two others up here which I'm having a look at to see if I can get them to come back to life. The one on the right hand side is the one from the box which is in slightly better condition and the one on the left is being used as a kind of a donor radio because it has uh, quite a few problems which will be, uh, it won't be worthwhile repairing because the cost will be quite high for the parts that are needed. And uh, then over here we have my ICOM, and then one down below is another one which I'm working on. This one has a power switch problem, uh, plus a number of other things which I've cleaned all up and re-lubricated um, all the switches and contacts and cleaned the case and got it working except for the power switch. So I'll probably have to swap out the power switch for one from this radio up here. Swap them around. Power switch, this one here locks in it's not maintaining contact i've cleaned it and lubricated but it just doesn't want to come right okay enough waffle in that respect over here is something that i got from the state this is a web industries locally manufactured uh, antenna coupler as opposed to an antenna switch it has uh, relays inside it so you can switch different antennas over here and the lights go across Rather nice Technicolor display for the lights, and that switches your antenna. You can hear the relays clicking in. Not quite sure what this milliamp meter is supposed to do here, whether it's supposed to pick up the RF signal, but uh, unlikely that it will pick up anything in that low kind of volume. So. What was the other thing? Oh yes, over here on this radio, which is a bit far back at the moment because I was working here, so I moved it out the way so that I wouldn't damage it. This is my Kenwood R600 power on there. Oh, it hasn't got the antenna switched to it, so. It's It's our famous Brazilian station radio was Missionary coming through here. Uh, this device up here, better turn it down a bit. This device up here is a filter. It's a, a Daytong multi-mode filter made in the UK so it's probably American viewers are probably not for, not that familiar with it it's called an FL filter FL filter 3 version 3 the third version of the filter as you can see here it has uh, auto notch which is this black button over here that's just your on off so if you want to bypass it you can go directly to the speaker without this without uh, basically switching it off that's single sideband and peak, and the peak knob is this one over here where you peak up a signal. So you peak it, and that's just single sideband, which we're on at the moment, filter. That's single sideband with an auto notch, and then there's CW, so the kind of yellowish writing is for RTTY and CW. Uh, that, that's only these two filters over here which are working in CW. Okay, and it says times a half, so in other words, whatever it's got there, 3.5 for your bandwidth would then be 1.75, 1.5, etc, etc, I assume. I haven't used that much on CW. It does work quite well if you have noise on the signal. I would 
Five par six. Filter, filter in. Filter out. Filter in. Okay, so you get the idea. You can make the bandwidth pretty narrow. This particular radio doesn't have narrow. It does have um, a narrow filter, but it doesn't have. It just has wide and narrow. So it's got, and the, the wide is quite wide on this one. And the narrow is quite narrow, it's the SSB, so you don't have anything sort of in between. Whereas with this one, they're variable, and you can set the filter um, to more or less whatever you want it to be. You can adjust the upper and lower end of the bandwidth. Okay, that's a Daytong filter, so I was very fortunate to get that. I've been looking for one of those for a long time. They're quite hard to find here where I live, so uh, that was a nice uh, score in that respect. Um, let's have a look at the icon with the sticky uh, power on off button. I'm just going to switch over the tenor. Okay, this radio's audio doesn't sound as nice as the Kenwood because it's using its little small internal speaker, which is firing upwards here. So, and this is very bright and dim here. Let's turn that down a bit so we can actually see something. It's a good signal, as you can see. We'll increase the treble a bit here, maybe. It is working, as I said, unfortunately the uh, power switch is, uh, tends to not come on sometimes or sometimes it just switches itself off, so I still got to look into that a bit further. And the display is not getting brighter and dimmer as you're seeing in the video, that's just an artifact of the uh, video, because it's a fluorescent display, they do funny things in the videos. So uh, that's about all for the moment. So uh, not again. This is obviously the uh, not obviously. This is the Brazilian station radio Vaz missionary. So the sensitivity and everything seems to be good on this radio. Seems to be working well. Okay, that's rather a lot of technical chat for today, but um, that's what I have been up to, and that's why you haven't seen uh, many posts from me. So I've got to try and get these radios back to the. Uh, people who are dealing with the state that I'm talking about now, the ICOM radios. That one's my one, which works perfectly. It's, uh, I, that's, that was also from an estate, actually, but I bought it from a dealer who uh, acquired the whole estate. And that has a couple of modifications to it as well, which I also did with the help of a friend. So uh, thanks for uh, listening, and... Uh, We'll see if we can post some more interesting videos on some uh, shortwave stations in the future.